So guys, our slogan is process over players, but is our process trash? We got some questions to challenge our process because we haven't done a single buy, sell, or ranking show in 240 some odd episodes. Instead, we're preaching this process stuff. So here's a question. With RB by committee becoming more prevalent, doesn't having a hammer slash workhorse RB become that much more important over a hammer receiver? You said in your Bijan video that 75% of teams aren't ready for him. Having him for around six years becomes even more valuable when in two years, you may only see a handful of three down running backs. What do you think about that, Scott? Well, it's a good question. And I think it's something that we've had to think about, especially with the changing landscape of running backs. What we've seen is a trend of the high-end scoring has gone down. So we've seen less of these. Anyone that played back in 2015, 2016, 2017, even 2018, 2019, we had a running backs that were literally winning leagues, where the quarterbacks are now almost. 24, 25, 26 points per game. That's gone. The most we've seen over the last couple of years is 22, getting close to 23-ish, and it's coming in a little bit of a different form. And so when you start looking at, and I put out the podcast this past week on Destination Dynasty talking about snap share and how running back scoring has gone down. And I think the person that posed this question is correct, that you're seeing more and more committees to where now you expect a committee on almost every backfield. We're drafting a lot of the running backs this year with the expectation that they are a, a 60, 40 running back. Now, whatever that looks like, whether it's 60% because they get a lot of carries or it's 40% because they have really, really high passing volume or really good receiving efficiency. The reality is a lot of these running backs are operating in these 60, 40 committees. Either one of them can be productive it's very hard for them when they're in that range to be the absolute hammer difference makers. So the point of the question was, okay, if all of this is true, isn't the one or two or three guys that are still operating like Christian McCaffrey did, or even where like Zeke did in his prime. And some of these guys that we've seen hit like 80% snap share by default, even if those guys are not good receivers, they are going to get targets. They are going to get receptions because they're just out there more. You know, they're playing half of the third downs. Even if they're not good, they're out there. So you're going to fall into 50 catches just because you're out there. So the question is basically how much of an advantage is Bijan relative to a market where that doesn't exist anymore? And instead of there being three, four, five, six guys that can match him, there's only one other one or there's only two others. The major question with that is what are you paying? Right now you're paying RB1 overall price. And... How long does that value actually hold? Is the community going to value that guy in six years? He used the six-year mark. The reality is the six years are you hope his career lasts for six years. Within one or two years, that's going to be the peak of his actual trade value. So if you're if you're willing to bet that Bijan is the next, let's just call him, I don't even want to say he's the next Christian McCaffrey. That's so lofty to put on anybody. Let's right. just say he has... Let's give him a Todd Gurley career. Todd Gurley was like in the league for six years, then he was gone. But three or four of those le those years, he was absolutely dominant. Let's say we give him that stretch of Todd Gurley's career, where he had two of these seasons where he was just absolutely crushing fantasy. You probably wanted those on your team. And you had to pay for those when they were happening, if you wanted to. And the whole point of having the Bijan asset is, okay, how much can I get out of him? But then how much can I sell him based off this idea that he's such a difference maker that he's almost like the Travis Kelsey version of running backs? That's kind of what you're speaking to if this actually happens, where it's like him, and then there's three or four others that are within 80%, and then there's nobody else. The problem is when you have an asset like that, do you trade it? Or does it become so much of an advantage you go, I can't move it anymore? So I think that's the biggest thing you have to kind of think about is if you're willing to make a big bet on Bijan being that, especially relative to his position, that's fine. Invest. The problem is if you don't have the team around him this year, don't bank on that six years. If my team is not ready for Bijan, guess when I expect his first season of that potentially to be? Now. There isn't a let's wait two years and he does it. If he's going to do it, he's going to do it right away. He's going to do it halfway through his first year. He's already going to be there. So I can't afford to go, man, okay, my team's ready to contend at the mid to late 2024 mark, then 2025 is I'm really hitting my stride. 
then you've wasted the Bijan asset. You've literally wasted probably two years of the peak value just to hope that you're ready to go in 2025. I think that's where we're talking about. Like, it's unfortunate that if your team isn't ready for Bijan right now, the time's probably to sell. You don't have a big window. His career is only going to be a certain length, and his dynasty value career length is going to be even shorter. Get when he's four years in, he might have already done this 22, 23 point per game mark two or three times. At that point, though, it's going to be too late. Where the way we're trending, someone is not going to trust that. They are not going to pay the price like you would have charged for Travis Kelsey a year or two ago. He was unattainable mm. because the person with him is like, he's just dying on my roster. I'll just ride it out. So I think that's the conundrum. I want Bijan. I want probably 10% of Bijan. But I, I want to make sure in my portfolio it is in the right spots where I'm ready to embrace the prime of his career over the next two or three years. And that's it. If I'm not ready, I'm cashing out because he's still a first-round startup pick. Shane, in Superflex, would you rather have Saquon and a mid, projected mid-24 first or the one-on-one? I mean, this is partly colored by the fact that I know that's probably the best I'm ever going to do for Bijan because I've been trying to trade the 101 and I can't, which is, I think the bigger thing for me is just the value of it. Like, you know, if, if Bijan was a wide receiver, just if all things were being equal, right. There wasn't a, he's a running back and Justin Jefferson was a wide receiver, like just their, their fantasy assets, they'd be worth the same thing. But unfortunately one's a wide receiver, the other's a running back. So they're not. So I would likely take the 24 first and Saquon not being particularly happy about it. Um, but I, I would do that because I, again, we're thinking, well, Saquon's going to give me some approximation of the production that Bijan's going to give me. He's not as good as Bijan. He, you know, coming out of college, he might've been, but he's not now. And the 24 first with that, what else can I do with that? Can I add to my roster? I do like, um, I do like getting like one monster running back and I, I, every year I try to do it and I try to stick mm-hmm. to it. And every week I go, Oof, what can I trade this for though? Cause this is dangerous living. Cause I'm worried about the f- fragility of the position, you know, like Brees Hall, I was absolutely all over him last year, loved him. And then he just smacks me in the face by tearing every ACL. So, well, just one, I think just the one he tore, but either way, oh, Scott was about to chime in. Well, I was just going to say, I don't think people realize just how hard it is to hit this quote unquote difference making level that we're talking about. And it isn't an indictment on Bijan, but he could still be everything you want him to be. And he still doesn't hit this level. The, the, the optics around these guys that were hitting these levels were ridiculous. You go back and look at like Christian McCaffrey's peak season. He played 93% of snaps in a season that will never happen again. No running back will ever do that again. In fact, last year, only 16 players were even at 60%. And over the last five years, it's been an average of like 14. So the guys are not playing like they used to play five years ago. And so that's the part of the thing with Bijan is even if he hits his peak from an efficiency standpoint, he may look on paper like, dude, this is the best running back in the league. But then you look at the actual fantasy production and you're like, yeah, he's only hitting about 20.9 points per game. And we're going to be like, dude, he's awesome. But then you're going to go back and look at like what Le'Veon Bell hit in his peak and what even Austin Eckler has hit in his peak. And you're going, if Bijan just hits that, that's going to be at the very, very high end of the range of outcomes. So I think it's just quite a bet we are making. Oh, yeah, he's going to have one of these monster 24-point-per-game seasons. No doubt. No doubt he's going to have it. It may be very limited to wherever he lands may just limit him from ever doing that. Fair or not, there are certain landing spots where they go, you know what, we're going to give him his 60 to 65%. But it's never going to be enough unless he is literally the most efficient running back of all time. And he's good, but he's not faster than Brees Hall. He's not a better receiver than Christian McCaffrey. Like, it isn't like he's this prospect that literally will change the NFL. And that's the expectation we're putting on him. So he may even hit what we expect. And we go, yeah, he was an RB1 for five seasons, and he was a top three running back three times. Like, still, from a difference-making standpoint, that is not going to be worth more than, Shane, what can you buy Christian McCaffrey for right now? A mid-first, do you think? Okay, so let's say I can buy one more season of Christian McCaffrey scoring 20 points per game. Wouldn't that be a better bet for the team that isn't sure they can win right now and would rather cash out on the Bijan 
and go buy one of those guys and just try to steal a season out of it, but still bank that value. What if things don't go right? Same for the team that has Bijan and already has a dominant team. Can you pivot off of Bijan for the deal that Clay asks? Still have your cake and eat it too for another year or two, but then add that extra first or more on top of the value. Because it's it's we're getting to the point where it's just a monster bet on Bijan. And unless your team is ready, I'm just not comfortable making it. So so let's do this as Shane departs. Scott, can you give a 30-second definition of what is process? When we say that's a good process trade or that's good process, see if you can sum it up for us. Shane's distracting me because he came back. Let's see where he ends up landing in the stream. Shane? Sorry, I, I had to go back out because I couldn't see any comments past 8.21 p.m. for some reason. So I went back out and came back in. 30-second definition of process. So it's identifying types of trades and looking within the dynasty landscape where I hate to use the word exploit, but that's basically what you're doing. I'm usually trying to exploit somebody that plays differently than me. Somebody that is viewing players for, I like this player. I like him better than the market. I have to get him on my team. Like someone that just views the game slightly differently than me. I'm very much a data-driven numbers person. I'm always going to make the bets when they're in my favor, whether it makes sense or not. I don't care about the players. I truly don't care about the players. If I ever say, hey, I care about this player, it's more of I care about their market value. I care about why I have that player, what they're worth. It isn't because they're my favorite player. They're on my favorite team. I love watching them, you know, X, Y, or Z. So it's really just exploiting behaviors and tendencies of other managers and doing it in ranges where even if I'm wrong, it gives me minimal damage. I think that sums it up. A lot of times I'm making the process deals. They're in places where I go, yeah, if I lose this deal, it's not really hurting me. Even if I lose trading a wide receiver two for another wide receiver two, I know that's a range where it's very minimal impact that's going to hurt me. And if I get the draft pick on top of it, it's it's free money for me. So it's usually finding places where people may not understand how the data works and just taking advantage of their biases. So here's one. We got this in the uh, in the community uh, tab on YouTube. It was this guy who said that recently he got Rashad Penny and, and Walker and startups. And he said, Scott suggests that I sell Penny for Cord Cordero Patterson or Mostert in a future pick. Can't I just imagine I have a league winner and be happy for a few weeks? Hey, look, fantasy football, and, and I've said this before, you'll notice I joke around a lot. Fantasy football should be fun, right? Part of what I like is winning, um, and I like winning money because um, I have child support, and that, that shit ain't, it ain't cheap. But also, but yes, you know what? Look, if you want to just say, I'm going to hold on to uh, Rashad Penny because I think he could be a league winner, do it. That's fine. Do that with one or two players on your roster every year. Do that. Just don't do that with everybody that's in that bucket. Don't go with like, all right, I got six prayers on my roster, and I'm just going to hold on to every one of them instead of flipping them for a profit. Here was another good one too. Sorry, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to, he called you out. You got to speak to it. I mean, that's just a database trade. You're sitting there looking at running backs that are all in the range of every one of those names he mentioned, Penny, Patterson, and Mostert. They are all what? They are all one year bets. They are all one year plays. Now, one might be a little younger than the other, but they operate in the range till we know all three of those guys are, if they have a good season, guess what? They're going to be back for another one. If they get hurt and they're bad, guess what? There's a chance that they're not on a roster. So it's just it's just math. It's going, okay, I'm looking at the career numbers, especially the last couple of years for Cordero Patterson. They're no different than what Rashad Penny has done in his career. Now, sure, he had that stretch at the end of 2021 where he was a quote-unquote league winner. But that's what you're betting on if you're going to take Rashad Penny in lieu of Cordero Patterson in a second or something like that. Like If you can get that traded – just makes no sense unless you say, hey, I love Rashad Penny. I'm an Eagles fan. I'm more excited than this signing than I've ever been in my life, and now I have him on my dynasty roster. And guess what? I'm not trading him. He's going to win my league. Fine. I just acknowledge what you're doing. You love Rashad Penny. That's what you're. That's how you're playing it. I'm speaking to Shane because he loves Rashad Penny. Yeah, I, look, I, I, I don't want any parts of Rashad Penny but you know if you want Rashad Penny that's fine I, I mean I'll trade him in every league I can but the problem is is like it's going to be I don't know that I could get Cordell or Patter Cordell Patterson and a pick at least not a pick that would matter to me 
Like, am I going to get Corderell Patterson? I'll say his name right one of these times by accident. Am no, I going to get Corderell Patterson in a fourth for Penny? Sure, but I mean, fourths really don't matter to me. And Patterson versus Penny is pretty meh. So to me, if you want to hold on to Penny, fine, do that. I, I, I have a problem when you don't flip players for like valuable assets. Like if you can get a second out of someone and don't do that, then I'm like, well, now you're not having fun. You're being stupid. But if it's Penny versus Patterson and a pick, whew, alliteration. Nicely done. You it. nailed that one. Well, and here's why I know that's an advantageous trade. Because if you look back right when Penny signed with the Eagles, he was going for seconds. You look at where Patterson was going, nobody wanted Patterson. But when you put that trade in a smart manager's inbox and they see Rashad Penny for their second, even if it's a 24 second or the 212 for Cordero Patterson in their second and they get Rashad Penny, a smart person is going to go, wait a second, man, I'm paying a second for Rashad Penny and I have to give back this Cordero Patterson who I know nobody else wants. But man, I can squint and see where he can be just as good as Rashad Penny for a short period of time, especially if all I want out of him is a couple starts. I don't want to do that trade. And then they reject it. But then they'll go out on Twitter and go, man, buy Rashad Penny for a second. You know, that's a great deal. He could smash your league. But those same people, when you put that process trade in their inbox, then they hits them and they go, man, that's a bad bet for me. You know, man, I may give up the running back that could be healthier and better. And I have to pay the second. And then they decline it. And that's where you get free information on these process deals. Okay, the person declined it. You can kind of tell they think about this the same way that you are. But if you can get that deal done, you, you've won. You know, it's, it's a deal that's hard to pull off in theory because as soon as you put that in front of somebody, they're going to, if they think about it for even 10 seconds, they're going to go, hey, why am I doing this? Why do I have to give back that extra piece? And that's the leverage, right? That I wouldn't want to yep. do that trade if I sell Rashad Penny for the 212. What am I getting? Another running back, RB10 in the class? What is that, a 50-50 bet on Rashad Penny? I'll yes, take that over no, Rashad Penny. Sure, but that that's not what I'm aiming for. If I'm going to make a trade like that, I want the leverage. Give me the multiple outs. I don't want to do coin flip trades. They're pointless. They're a waste of time. Unless I am literally trying to liquidate for a draft pick so I can use it for something else, that'd be the only reason. But if you tell me whoever I draft at 212, it's a coin flip whether that guy's better than Rashad Penny. It's probably going to be a running back. And they're probably a guy that, guess what? I hope they're in a role like Rashad Penny. That's right. it. So there's no leverage for either side on that trade, which is why it's important to make the two-for-ones. That's where the process comes in. One-for-one, one, I'm not really interested. If all I'm making is one-for-one one trades, I'm never winning. I'm just basically winning some, losing some. Maybe I win 55 to 60% of them, but there's no leverage. There's no real profit to be made in those types of trades. So I thought this next one was a good one because what we're talking about right now with with leverage trades and, and making trades, what about inactive leagues when it comes to our process over players? So couldn't a flaw of process over players be that it truly only works in active leagues? If the main strategy behind the process is gaining leverage, doesn't that lose effect in an inactive league where you can't really even use that leverage to gain other pieces you want? If so, do you abandon the process in in inactive leagues and try to secure as many studs as possible in the startup and rookie draft. Yeah. I'll let Shane answer this. Cause we talk about this a lot of times. Know your league, right? There's yeah. leagues where if you know, it ain't active, good luck. You're going to get no response on 80% of the leverage trades. And then you're like, I'm yeah, stuck with what I have. And that's when it's like, all right, it's time to overpay. And why am I overpaying? Because this is the only dude that's going to, or woman that's going to trade with me. Like no one will trade in this league. So, and that's one of the, and what's always fun about that is then the trade will happen and then in the chat, someone will go, I would have given you more. And you go, no, yeah, you yeah, want right. bitch. No, you want because you don't respond to my trade offers. They expire. Um, so yeah, I, sometimes you do look, we talk about context matter too, right? We do. Um, I'm not an uh, automatron, so I understand that there's context even to a process that you got to take into account. If my league doesn't trade, then it, it, it's I'm not going to be like, no, I can hold out for a little more and do better. I'm going to be like, no, this is all I'm going to do because this is like we make like three trades a year. So I'm going to make the deal. I'm going to overpay and I'll be OK with that. In the end, if you can't like process deals, leverage, all that's great, except if you can't do it. You have to be practical at some point. 
you know? And, and we, we make decisions like that all the time in leagues. Like, is this the perfect trade? Is this the exact trade that I want it? No. Is this the best I'm going to do? And it, and it, it's good enough. Yes. Then I'll go ahead and pull the trigger. I, I think one thing to consider is uh, like on our roster reviews, we ask people how active is your league? It's important. Because a lot of times we talk about deals all the time where we are trying to make trades and the answer to the trade question is usually, okay, I'd rather have this than that because I'd rather have this because I know in the future I can do something else better with that. But if there's no activity and it's only a couple people, you do have to think about things a little bit differently. And, and I'm fortunate enough to be in a lot of leagues that maybe they're not so active that there's 10 trades going down every single day but it's active enough where I can go out and there's usually five, six, seven people lurking at one time that are willing to play ball when there's an idea on my end. And I think that's a big thing to consider is if you don't have that in your league, A, get into leagues that are active. That's the first thing. You don't want to be... St if you're in one league and it's not active and you can't make process trades and you can't practice going out there and playing in a market where there's buyers and sellers get in some active leagues, but also you do have to, you do have to approach it differently. I'm going to be tighter on the assets that I have. I'm probably going to be much more apt in a startup. If I know the league is not going to be super active, I'm going to probably be really rigid with how I construct my team. And I want to go in a very specific direction. I'm not going to take as much risk. So it's hard to quantify though. It's really hard. Yeah. I would say this, look, and I'm sorry, I keep going in and out. I don't know why. Oh, my you're good. My you're good. So, something more. good happened here. I can now see how many people we have in this stream. There was some funkiness going on. Go, okay, go ahead. So it's Shane. not just me. And StreamYard was giving me problems the other night, by the way. Um, so screw you, StreamYard. Um, leave those leagues. Look, it, I, 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 it's fun. Whatever's fun for you, right. But if it's not an active league, I can't imagine that it's fun. And I'm not telling you to leave just because you can't make trades. But if it's not active because there's no trading, I'm guessing it's inactive in other ways too like the only time anyone talks to each other is during the rookie draft it's like oh okay and and it's like a bad marriage right like you go to marriage counseling for a month and you're like wow we really started to communicate like they care about my feelings you know i haven't had this much fun with that person in a long time that league and then a month later it's just back to being dead and you completely forget the league even exists so another thing that we talk about in our in our process is how we like to spend to move back up into the first in startups to get two elite QBs. Um, this one is when would you advise against selling the ranch for an elite QB? What scenario would you split an elite QB into multiple assets? Super flex, start blank. So let's talk about elite QBs when we're buying them, when we're selling them. Uh, I'll sell them. Once we get into the start 11 range, I, I'm, I don't want to say fine because it still hurts. It hurts inside, but I'm okay with splitting them. A again, based on the rest of my roster, we've talked about it. We move up, we take uh, two quarterbacks, right? And we expect to be able to hit on the other positions. They're easier to fill. Guess what? It doesn't always work. Sometimes you miss on every other position and you're like, damn, like I, I just, I got, I drafted Rashad Bateman, Rondell Moore, uh christian kirk pre jacksonville like you just have a lineup full of those dudes and you're like uh this didn't work and you know what I i'm in a league like that where i'm like all right i need to split lamar jackson and i'll split them if i can get a 103 and a 24 first and garrett wilson for him and i'll keep trying to get that until i can get it done because i look at the rest of my roster i need the length of my lineup it's baseball season right i need the length of my lineup I want to be able to have as many people stick in starter positions that are actually good. Um, and when I look and I have guys like I can't even pronounce their names, which is a lot of players, but you know, like Tommy Tremble is uh, just on the edge of starting for me. I'm like, you know what? This roster probably <laughs> needs a lot more help than just this quarterback, but I'm going to try to split it. And I'm going to try to do it in a position where if I'm doing it, I'm getting a, a high pick that I can also get a quarterback for, from now. Yeah, it's a complex question because there's always different scenarios in different leagues and whatnot. I think the easiest place is if you have two quarterbacks that are really good and then you have nothing else on your team, a lot of people will say, okay, well, how can I turn down this deal where I'm getting four firsts for Trevor Lawrence? And I think the makeup of the deal, I'm never opposed to trading an elite QB. 
I'm not opposed to trading Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. Now, the exact deal that it would take to get one of those guys is so specific that very rarely is the team wanting to trade for them actually in a position to make that trade. A lot of times the person that's hitting you up wanting to make one of these trades, they don't have necessarily exact pieces that you want back. Otherwise, if they did, they may be going, well, maybe I can just get to where I can get to with what I already have. You know, like, yeah, sure. If I'm trading Patrick Mahomes, it's going to be involving a tier down to the next tier. That's it. If you don't have one of those guys, I'm not interested in moving off of him. And so it's kind of like it defeats the purpose when the trade partner goes, yeah, I don't have a quarterback. What can I buy your Deshaun Watson for? It's like, well, there's not a lot that would motivate me to move. Now, there are circumstances where let's just say it is a start 12 or a start 13, like Shane said. And you have the opportunity to move off of a elite quarterback, a guy you could put on the block and get three starters for. Let's just say three starters, right? Can I then roster construct around? Let's say I have, I'll give you an example. Let's say I have Justin Herbert and Jalen Hurts. Okay. Can I then go, let's say my fourth, my third QB is like Derek Carr. I'm fortunate enough to have those three. I could live with a Jalen Hurts, Derek Carr, Kenny Pickett quarterback room. And I'm just banking Kenny Pickett and Derek Carr can give me like the platoon at the two and three in a start 12. There would be a scenario where I'd be like, all right, what can I get back for Justin Herbert? Can I tear down? First thing I'd be trying to do is tearing down to the next tier. Can I go from Justin Herbert to Deshaun Watson and get an extra starter? I don't want to go all the way down to like the fifth tier. And I think that's a lot of times what happens is the person that has, what have I said before? If I have Justin Fields, am I adding a first to go get Joe Burrow? No, I don't have any interest. I don't okay. care. I'm already roster constructing the way that I want. So I think it has to be a very specific scenario. Just, just the, hey, I'm rebuilding. Let me trade Trevor Lawrence to get three plus first. One of those, including Garrett Wilson and then Kyle Pitts and the 102. Like the Very few circumstances it might be like, yeah, take the deal. But you know what? If you do and you just like playing around with the picks and the pieces that you got, then fine. Just not, you know, not my cup of tea. Yeah, you, look, there's some built-in risk to that, right? I traded Trevor Lawrence in a league for the one oh, like the one oh three, and a, a future first, and it's a fourteen team super flex, right? And again, and it start like thirteen, and um, yeah, I, I don't know, it just, it's not great, Bob. So I said, all right, well, I'm gonna risk that at one oh three, either C.J. Stroud or it ended up being Bryce Young are going to be moving into that that Trevor Lawrence tier, and if they do, I get a free first out of it. If they don't. I'm going to have to move quickly to recoup some value on them, but I'll probably be able to recoup some value on them at the end of the year, even if it looks like it's not going great. But, you know, I, I could probably hold two years just looking at T law situation. I don't imagine either of those guys got into a situation as bad as his last year though. So we, uh, we've got 402 people in here, 402 eyeballs, as I like to say, on our Tuesday nights. It's awesome seeing you all. You look lovely out there. We can actually see some of the comments coming in now. We can see how many eyeballs we have. I'm sure we have 402 likes, Shane. Is that what you is that what you saw? You're the rest well of the league, below. Well below. Look, even if everybody in here only had half an eye, we do not have all the likes that uh, we should. That'd be 203. Yeah. So if you're enjoying this content thus far, if you wouldn't mind looking down, hit that little thumbs up, give us a like, we'd appreciate that. Easiest way to help out this channel. Let's move on to a, uh, to a super chat that we got sweet knees. Thank you very much. 12 team super flex start 10 PPR earned the one Oh one have the one Oh two four seconds two twenty four first Lamar Waddle London Goddard just traded the one eleven two Oh two and Elijah Moore. For Amon Ross St. Brown. Good move or bad for the process? What should be the next step? Um, well, I'm gonna answer this question and saying that the, the next move in this process or that would crack a beer and is, take tomorrow off. I was gonna send a follow-up thank you email. Um, thank you for taking the time to make this deal with me. I appreciate uh the consideration that you put into it. Um, just to keep those lines of communication open because I would like to deal with them again. Yes, I'll trade the 111, the 202, and Elijah Moore all day for Amon Ross St. Brown. We just did the 111 video that dropped last week or a couple days ago and we actually just recorded the 112 video last night and i am even 
more bullish on this trade uh, having done those videos. So, yes, this is a great trade. You just trade it for a top 10 dynasty wide receiver, giving up a bunch of middling assets. So, yeah, this is a great deal. Yeah, especially with the excess of picks. He's got the four seconds. He's got the 224 first. I can live with it. Now, you can't take what you don't want to do on a team like this that probably doesn't have massive amounts of depth is to take every one of those picks and trade for two more or three deals like this. And then you have no other future picks and you go, great. I have an awesome starting lineup of like eight or nine players. You may be able to get to a point where you're good and you're contending. You're not building a dynasty that way. What you want to do is try to kind of get your way to competition ready level, top three, top four in your league and still have the multiple firsts till have the draft flexibility to move around. So I think next step here is, you know, this is a team you're fine taking Bijan on. And you probably have to figure out your second quarterback. He doesn't list anybody else, so I'm guessing it's probably a little uninspiring. What can the 102 and a future first get me? Can it get me in the Watson range? Can it get me in the Fields range? If so, I mean, I'm willing to go to bat with Waddle, London, Amon Ra, Goddard, and those two quarterbacks and just patch work together running backs. He's got four seconds for a reason. He can roster construct around a weak running back room for a year. Just beat him to death with as many bodies as possible. But the nice thing is you got the two first next year. Yep. You got those in the chamber. Even if you're not ready to contend or you're not winning this year, you don't have the pressure when you have three firsts next year. When you have all your picks. Where, where you get in trouble is, man, it's a start 10. I'm weak. Let me gut all my picks next year to go get that extra starter. What if some things go wrong during the season? Then what? You get yep. to sell... Jalen Waddle for first, you know, like you're going backwards at that point. You're, you're, you're unless you can get one of the leverage deals in the season where you get a bunch of value, you're just going backwards. Okay, let's uh let's keep moving on here. Let's see. Shane's uh saying Bueller, Bueller, anybody I'm sending these private messages? I I don't know what you what you wrote there. Didn't you see my messages before that? Yeah, I mean, I saw some messages. We're we're still dealing with uh, Streamyard and YouTube acting funky. Um, let's go to uh, let's go to this one right here. Dan Grimm with the super chat. Thank you very much. This is one of two. Thanks, guys. Was the first one. Next is twelve team superflex PPR trade Kyler a twenty four first twenty four third for Pickett, AJ Brown, and a twenty four second. Other QBs are Russ and Love and have DK and Jamison Williams as wide receivers. I'm good. I'm not you, would, you would have held the Kyler side. Um, this is not the time to trade Kyler. It's not the time to add a first to Kyler when the best you're getting back is AJ Brown. You, yeah, I would rather go buy a cheaper quarterback and try to fill in for Kyler for the short term. If you really want to on honestly, a lot of my Kyler teams, I've kind of just, accepted the fact that next year could be a little shaky. Like, I don't want to sell him though. I don't want to sell him for AJ Brown, which is basically what you're doing here. And you're still giving up a first to then get Kenny Pickett in a second. I'm good. What's your, what's your price check on, uh, on Kyler these days in super flex. Are you giving the one Oh four for Kyler? That's probably right around the range. Me personally, I'd probably go. Let me let me sit on the 104 because I think that's still a very high leverage spot because it's still going to be a quarterback or the best skill player, not named Bijan. But I think 105, 106, if you can get Kyler for that. At the same token, I don't expect the Kyler manager to go. Oh man, let me smash Kyler for that 106. So I think it works both ways. You got to be convicted on him. I'm su- I'm not super convicted, but I'm not selling him for AJ Brown. I will pay the 104 easy. I take Ant- him over Anthony Richardson or Will Levis. Did I get it right? Wrong. <laughs> will Levis any day of the week. Um, I'm thinking 103 too. Like the more I think about it, I'm thinking I'm way too. Look, we got some pushback on some of our Kyler talk, and maybe some of the people have gotten around, gotten to me a little bit. I still haven't been able to pull the trigger to actually send that offer, but I'm at least thinking I might give up the 103 for Kyler. Nobody should, should buy Andy owners? Dalton for a second. No. Yeah, should Kyler buy Andy Dalton for a second? No. Uh, the answer Never. is no. no. But but that's why it's nice to have the Andy Daltons because you can try to pull a move like that and just get a third round for, for Andy Dalton right now if you can. Um, okay, so let's keep going here. We've got a, this is a roster review follow-up question here from Manny. It's four parts. 
but I'm sure he wrote it out very nicely in his emails. He's very, uh, very organized, well-spoken. Manny, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the roster review. He said, don't know if you'll remember, but the CD Lamb trade that we thought would happen in the review did not happen. Quick review of the team and the settings. One QB, half PPR, 10 teams, start nine. He's got Fields, Geno, Love. At running back, he's got Jamal Williams, Herbert, Pacheco, and Farts. Chase, Garrett Wilson, Pittman, and Judy at wide receiver. Dulcich and Fant at tight end. As far as picks, he's got the 104, 108, 203, 204, a third, couple fourths, and he's got 224 firsts. After the review, the following two trades were completed. The first trade, elite tight end, tried trading the 104 for Pitts, Mark Andrews, TJ Goddard, but were unmovable. So he gave Dulcich the 108, 203, and got Kelsey and Jacoby Myers. Thoughts? What do you think about yeah, that sm- one? He smashed that trade in a 10 team start nine. Like you're, you're purely paying for positional advantage. And he got Kelsey for who was on the board at that one Oh eight in a single QB Shane. It wasn't fun. Was it? it? Whoever I picked, I don't like who I picked. Yeah. Um, right. And I would like to redact that. So yeah, I don't, I, it wasn't Travis Kelsey. It wasn't a guy that I gave up on way too soon in Travis Kelsey. No, it was yes. not. Love this deal for that. The settings that he has. I love this trade. Good job. And the second trade was all in question mark. Gave Garrett Wilson fields dubs, the one Oh four, two Oh four got Jalen hurts, Drake London DK and the three Oh six thoughts. So he upgraded at quarterback and essentially he ended up paying Garrett Wilson for the quarterback upgrade, and he still got back Drake London and DK Metcalf. Yeah, he gave up the 104, but even in a single QB, the 104 isn't... I'm okay moving that. So essentially, he pivoted Garrett Wilson and, let's call it Jordan Addison, or in Shane's world, it might be who, Zay exactly. Flowers? Okay. Yeah, who, that's Garrett Wilson and whoever the receiver is, you'd take it 104 for Drake London and DK. I'm fine with that pivot. And you got Jalen Hurts, who I would still take over Justin Fields. So I'm okay with this. I like it. We don't care about Dobbs, right? Um, I'll even say his name correctly. Uh, Romeo Dobbs. I don't even care about him. So, yeah, it's 104 and G-Will for Drake and DK. Uh, at, at worst, it's even. And, yeah, I'll take Hertz over Fields. So, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Good stuff, Manny. He's uh, he's in an active league where he can be uh, making process trades and things well, like that. He makes that, lots of trades. And, he makes lots and to of be- trades. And here's what's cool about this. It's a start nine. He just got Travis Kelsey and Jalen Hurts. Some serious in, in, difference makers. In a start nine, that's where you're okay paying. And he didn't give up a lot of leverage. He didn't have to give up all his picks to go and make those moves happen. He still got back good assets. Sure, is Garrett Wilson better than DK Metcalf? Probably. Definitely. But it's not like DK Metcalf doesn't hit your lineup. So good job. Very good job by him. Very good job indeed. Let me go to this one here. It was, uh, let me see. I want to make sure I say his name. So Andrew bought us a few coffees over on buy me a coffee. Thank you very much. Let me pull up the banner I created 10 team super flex start 11 half PPR QBs are burrow Dak love running backs, Brees Walker, Pollard Dobbins wide receivers, lamb, Deontay McLaurin, Judy, Tony, Elijah Moore. Give the 101 and 205 and love. Get Deshaun Watson. Still have the 106. You're on mute. I'm fine with it. Give 103 and 205 and get and love. And, and love. And love. Yeah. It gets back Watson. Yeah. I'm t- yeah. Watson, Burrow, Dak. Love that QB room in a 10 team. Yeah. Everything else, I mean, he's he's heavy at running back too in a half PPR, which is good. Oh, no, no, don't do this. No, don't listen to them. They're, no, no, find use that one hundred three for something else. You don't need three top eight quarterbacks. Well, Dak's not a top eight quarterback. Now flip Dak, flip Dak, flip See, Dak, and a pick, and and get and get uh, more assets. That's that's the process coming out. That is the if I have three top ten quarterbacks, I can pivot off of my third for a slightly lesser piece. He could probably go back to somebody that has a player similar to Jordan Love and go, 
What else can I get on top of Dak? My only pushback, this is a 10 team, not a 12 team. That third QB matters more in a 12 in a 10 team. Because you're going up against other quarterback rooms that are going to be just as good. There's more likely in a 10 team, there's three or four other teams that have as good a QB room as you with Burrow and Watson. Mm, I don't know. Burrow and Watson, that's pretty sick, dude. It's a 10 team, though. It is. The team, is. Mahomes might have fields. Herbert might have hurts. You know, like a 12 team, that's likely not happening. In a 10 team, I'm okay overpaying a little more for the third QB and then going from there and going down. And he's upgrading, I think, with Dak to Watson. So I'm okay yeah. doing that and then figuring out the third. Yep. So let's hit a couple of startup draft questions. So Jamie asked, can we get some more startup draft strategies? Is it a bad idea to trade a second round pick in my 24 first? for a second first round pick in a startup. So it looks like he's saying trade your second round startup pick and, and his first. 24 first for another pick in the first round of the startup. I mean, I'd say no until I find out that that pick is the 210 and you're getting the 105. Then, I'll, yeah, sure. The price, if you put who you're going to take at the 210 versus the 105, it's effectively, would you trade Kenneth Walker in a first to get Justin Herbert, of course you would. Yes, I would. L let's say it now, was um let's say it was around the if it's a 12 team, let's say it's around the 202 range. So who's going around the 202 in a super flex startup right now? You're looking at kind of a weakish quarterback there. Well, it's probably Dak, it's probably Kyler, it's probably the rookie picks. And yep. for me, this is where I'm a little bit different. Obviously, I've put out content talking about what I want to do in startups, but I also take that from the view of I assume everybody's operating the same way as me and that it's a very efficient board. That's not the case. I get a lot of people that ask me DMs, hey, what should I do in the startup? But then I kind of want to know what's their league like. They, there's legit leagues right now where Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson are falling to the end of the first, if not into the second. And if that's the case, why am I going to trade up in the mid first again for my extra first when maybe I drew the 104 and I also have the 209. But if you're telling me there's a shot Deshaun Watson's there at 203, I'm not going to give up my first to move up to that 20 or to, to that 107 or 108 until I kind of see how the board's going to go. So I think there's it, it differs from league to league. I I want to accomplish getting the two elite quarterbacks. Some leagues it's going to require you trade up. Other leagues, Deshaun may fall to the early second. Fields may fall to the late first. Lamar may fall to the early second. I, I in the leagues, I, not in a good league, they shouldn't. So I'll just I'll just leave it at that. In a good league, they shouldn't. So this would be a good trade. Um, you can't assume stupidity on your league mates' uh, behalf. I mean, maybe maybe you have a history with them and you know that they make uh, suspect moves. But I'll, I'll say that's not. You shouldn't just expect them to do doofus like things. And doofus like things is letting a quarterback like those two fall into the second half. Mm -hmm. I mean, Adiko's ADP right now has Deshaun Watson at the 201. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go to the 109 or 108 to get him. You can move to the end of the first, early second. There are people that are taking Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and the 101 clearly over Deshaun Watson. That's where the market is different than you and I. Right. You and I would send the 101 for Deshaun Watson, but a lot of people would go, nah, give me that 101. So let's go to this one here. Thank you for the super chat, Adams K. Jack. Startup question, one of two. Draft starts next month and received third overall pick. Sent my second, third, and fifth rounders with the second overall pick. Thinking of going receiver with my fourth rounder and drafting best value and smashing running backs to finish. Thoughts on the trade and strategy moving forward? 12-team super flex PPR with an extra 0.5 tight end premium. So absolutely crushed the um, the first trade, right? Giving the second round, third round, fifth rounder for the second overall pick. I guess it would have been nice to get a couple other pieces back. I'm assuming it was like a 17th and 18th. Well, yeah. I mean, so yeah, I like getting a 102, obviously, because um, that's good. But you didn't get any picks back. You got to get some picks back on back end. You just have to. But I mean, yeah, getting the 102 and then I don't know what his first pick was. What was his first pick? Third overall pick. So you got one oh two and one oh one oh three. So probably so, Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Not not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. But yeah, 
I, I can't be mad at it when this is where sometimes like, yeah, I'll, I'll falter away from the process too, though, is when I see the end result and the end result is, well, I got Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. It's kind of hard to be like, right. oh, well, you should have done better. You know what I mean? But I would have liked you to get some picks on the back end. That's all. And here's where context matters. A lot of the leagues you and I and Clay would join, Shane, they are 12 teams, start 12, 34-man rosters. I'm not making this trade in that league. But a lot of people that are doing startups, they'll do a 12-team, start 9, 24-man rosters. You know what? In that format, I can stomach doing this deal. I hate trading away startup picks and getting only one back when I give up three. But in a start 9 with shallow rosters, guess what? I'm going to be able to grind and find more value versus some of our startup drafts where it's like you're down to players you're just you're literally picking off players other people that in some of the shallow leagues wouldn't even have heard of those leagues you don't want to make a deal like this but context does matter if it's a shallower league and a start <laughs> start nine like those two elite quarterbacks are going to go a lot longer way so you just kind of have to know those those math equations before you go in if it's really deep start 12 you wouldn't want to make that deal without getting some later picks and then he says here, going uh, receiver with my fourth rounder is what he's thinking, and then drafting best best value and smashing running backs to finish. I guess, you know, just, just see how the board plays out, right? Be, fle- be flexible. You got your two elite QBs locked up. You don't exactly have to map out the rest of your startup right now. So if you ever want to see me roll my eyes harder than I've ever rolled my eyes um, is when someone asks me who they should pick in a round. Not, not, not like of a draft that hasn't started yet. Hey, so I was thinking at 109, I would go. And I'm like, you don't even know who's going to be on the board. Like even the drafts we're doing, we put the caveat out there that, hey, this is going to change by the NFL, after the NFL draft and stuff. And when people ask me now, like, oh, who should I pick? It, I'm like, I, you don't know who's going to be there. You got to see how the board falls. What if everyone just went on a wide receiver run and you're going to take the end of the tier because you're dead, you're, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You were dead set on selecting a wide receiver, even if it's not the right move there. Can I trade that fourth back for a future first and get a seventh or eighth round startup pick back? Because what pick did we say he had? He had the yeah, 103, the right? And picked up the 102. Yep. Okay. So would you trade Jackson Smith and Jigba for Brandon Ayuk in a first? Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what it is. And you're probably going, man, I want to take a receiver, whoever it is. Right now, if you're looking at that spot, that's the 106 rookie pick. At the 410. The other receivers in that range are Christian Watson, Jamison Williams, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup. If I can move off that pick, that is a flat range of receivers. If I can move off that pick, this is where I need to get some of the value back from the first trade that I made. Can I get two assets that are still within startable range, even in a start nine or a start 10? I don't want to just pick a receiver at 104 or at that fourth round startup pick. I want to try to trade that back and get two pieces. And that's part of the process of like, okay, I already gave up three startup picks. I have these quarterbacks, but then what? Especially if it's a little bit of a deeper league. Like this is where you try to trade back because it's a flat range. So Blaze has a a question for us. It's an inbox trade. This is sitting in his inbox. Superflex, uh, start nine, half PPR. I guess we don't know if it's, it looks like it is a 12 team because he's got the 112. So 12 team, Superflex, start nine, half PPR. Give the 102, says he doesn't need a QB, get the 107, 112, 209. I know in a start nine, I probably need the best player more, but one of the crews take just in case. Can he trade the 112 and the 209 for a 24 first? If so, I'm doing it just based on the process. But what if you, what say, if you couldn't? I mean, in a start nine, do you really want to make three of those picks at the one, 107, 112, and 209? Especially no. when you're going to get probably sniped on the... Here's the thing. Guess who the perfect pick is at 107? That's the Will Levis spot, but he doesn't need a QB. So he's not going to want to take Will Levis either, which means he's going to reach on Quentin Johnson or Jordan Addison. Then he's going to have to make two more of those picks at the 112 and the 209. He's going to get three players. And I don't know what Shane's going to say, but Shane, wouldn't you rather trade that 102 for just a non-quarterback? Yeah. That's yeah. that's what I was thinking. I, I'm going to buy buy someone. One, yeah, 102. Look, you already know my stock answer. Like, you don't even need me. Just just have the little avatar saying it. Uh, Brees Hall, JT, Saquon, well, CMC, then Saquon, Ken Walker. How about Chris Alave? 
I, I bet you I could get Chris Olave and some more because people aren't as in on Chris Olave as they should be, according to the KC, KTC's rankings, which is a reflection of the community. So, uh, oh yeah, it's gospel, but, right? Yeah, no, I mean it is. That's that's people. I got I, I've been going on there and actually doing their cut, keep trade cut thing lately. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would take Chris Olave and a little plus. I'm going to set out a poll with from the trades in five Twitter handle asking people if they take the time to select keep trade cut when they go on that website or if they just go keep trade cut, you know, I, uh, from top to bottom, if they actually answer, you know, I hope that, I would hope that, you know, it's a free site, right? So you could at least just do that. Take the three seconds it takes to do it. Now they did give me the other day, Matt Breida, Josh Oliver, yeah. and some other trash can. And I was like, why can't I just cut all three? Which I, but anyway, I got yeah yeah okay um hopefully we helped you out there blaze basically said don't uh don't do it just yet explore other options uh if you can trade that 112 and 208 or whatever it was for 24 first and maybe you're talking okay let's keep on rolling here 465 people in here we've never had a 500 burger on one of we our live streams we'll, we'll get there we'll get yeah. there so if everyone could just hit share on twitter right now Log your kids in. I promise I won't curse or talk about selling drugs in college, any of that stuff. If you get your kids to come on and just watch. Well, they don't have to watch. Just log them on. We just need the eyes. Don't let me forget, too, before the uh, before the end of the stream to announce the the three winners of the of the bracket challenge. We got the uh, we got the three winners who won listener league spots. We'll, we'll let you know that one. OK, Josh, thank you for the super chat. 12 team super flex start nine PPR quarterbacks are Russ <laughs> QB is Russ running backs Algier wide receivers Wilson Alave Jamo Pittman Judy picks 101 102 111 201 and a 24 second inbox offer give the 102 111 201 and Pittman get Dak CD and James Cook. Plan on taking Bijan 101. I feel like it's very close and fits my team needs. What else should I get back, if anything? <sighs> Let's go back to the inbox offer. I, I, I mean, yeah, I, personally, I'm good with it. It's addressing QB, which is which is the biggest thing when he said he only had Russ. It's getting CD Lamb. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Well, let's wash the DAC and the 102. Let's just yep, cancel yep. those out. That that's probably a fair price for DAC. So it's essentially the 111, 201, and Michael Pittman for CD Lamb and James Cook. It's a start nine. I would prefer to see if I can get can I get a 24 first back instead of James Cook? Something like that. Can I send a second and then take out James Cook and get a first? Something of that nature. Otherwise, I'm okay with it. He's trading for the Dak CD stack in a start nine. That's probably, from a warp standpoint, a good bet. If you're getting Dak, you might as well get his best weapon and who also happens to be a top five dynasty receiver. He is picking Brandon Cooks. In that, that dead zone range of the 111 and the 201. So I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I don't love getting the – I think James Cook is as irrelevant in a start nine than a lot of the running backs he could just go and buy. So – Look at look at Shane puffing up. What do you say, James Cook is irrelevant? What's your exposure to James Cook looking like these days, Shane? It's exactly the same. Because are, are you I, sub twenty percent? Well, yeah, but that's only because I think I was sub twenty percent before. Um, now I gotta look it up. I, I don't he still know. wants a late first. So that's why. Uh, look, you wanted to trade me, uh, make me pay a late first for I forget what player, and I'm just going to make Rashad White. And I know Rashad you'd rather White. have Rashad. You'd love Rashad White out of James. No, you Cook told right me now. you hate Rashad White, and he's not not worth anything more than a second. But only way you'll trade him to me is if I give you a first. Anyway, I traded uh, him. In same league, I was trying to spam him. I traded him already, so you missed out. Okay, let's um let's go here. Peyton with a uh, with a super chat here says, "Thanks to Shane and Scott for the help with trades on Twitter." I know a lot of folks reach out with questions. Um, okay, you guys are, are saints in the community. I'm converting rebuild into contender. Have the 101, 104, 103, 106. Okay, so 101, 103, 104, 106, 204, and 205. Would you make the 103, 104, and 106 picks or look to move them for other pieces? 
Now let's look at the roster. We got Burrow, Kyler, Tannehill, Brees, Pollard, J.K. Dobbins, T. Higgins, Debo, Myers, Bateman, Sutton, and Waller. Thanks. Please. Or P.S. Shane and Scott helped me send the 109 DJ Moore 207 for the 103 Myers and the 402. Okay. Let's see. So what are your thoughts here? There, there was another one it looks like, but I'm not going to read that right now. What was the first part of that? How many? <laughs> so it's a... Uh... We, d- we don't have a format here, which makes it very, very difficult to understand You know some of the dynamics of these trades. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but without... It's very hard to answer these questions with very, very explicit, like direct actionability unless we have the format. How many starters? How many roster spots? What's the setup? So, I mean, there, you <laughs> there go. we go. 12, no, he put it up there. 12 teams start nine, half PPR. So go back to the trades. Okay. Da-da-da. That's the roster. Here's the trade. Uh, well, you already helped him send the 109, DJ Moore, da 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 He's yep, basically start saying, nine to get yeah. another quarterback. That's that's a good move. Yep, I agree with that. Yep. So what would your plan be with a 103, 104, and 106? I mean, 103, 104, he has a lot of flexibility. He can go quarterback, and then he can try to trade one. He can go quarterback, and then best player available. He could even try to trade up and get Bijan. It's a half PPR. He could try to move the 103 up and get Bijan and then take whatever quarterbacks there at 104. Cause I'm okay at, on taking like Anthony Richardson on a team where I have Kyler as my QB two. You know, it's a little bit of a hedging your bets there on hoping one of those guys gets to, you know, back to the, or to the elite level. Yeah. Uh, he's like got a lot Peyton of flexibility. One Peyton has the one one already. So it's already oh, got yeah, that's right. locked up. Uh, then, I'm just taking best player available. I mean, this is an embarrassment of riches. So I would make a lot of the picks, but I would also find, you know, does he really need to make the 106 in this league? Or can he trade that back and try to gain some leverage out of it? I mean, I think there's there's a way you can put a dominant team on the field at the same time also move to protect yourself for the future. You want to go into next year with the best team, but also extra picks. Sure. This this one's uh just funny right here. If I couldn't reproduce, Shane would be the dude I want to help me out with my old lady. <laughs> this guy always has hilarious comments. It always mm-hmm. involves involves Wild. his wife, Shane's wife. <laughs> um, okay, let's go to um let's go to this one right here. Burn and dirt. Thank you for the super chat. You fine gentlemen are my go-to resource. Help in all caps with an exclamation point if you're just listening. 12 teams, start 10, super flex, half tight end or half point tight end premium, one running back. Purdy Ritter, a QB, running back to James Cook, Algier. Wide receivers, we have Olave, Burks, Tony, Myers, Dubs, and Ridley. Tight end, Evan Ingram. Have the 101, 104. <laughs> Do we have a 202 of two? 107, 108, 109, 201, two, and three. Please say the second part is up here. Is there a second part? I only I don't see a part one of two. I, I don't either. I, I'm guessing there is though. I, I don't know if we can we can read minds here where he's gonna go here. Here we'll p- take a pause on this one right here and hide it in the meantime. Thank you for for bird dogging that, Shane. Um, let's go ahead and go to, I don't have any more banners there. Darth Dookie. Thank you for the super chat. One of two, one QB start eight burrow, ETN acres, chase, Olave, JMO, Fryermuth, sky last week bought one Oh two and 24 second for 24 first 24 second and a 25 first today. I was offered the one Oh five, one Oh nine, 25 first and a bench player. For the 102 and 216. Bench players consist of dubs, Mike Evans, or Gainwell. Is this a trade I should be considering or sticking with JSN or Gibbs? Thanks, guys. Also, Scott, ever hear he looks like Charlie Day? Never heard that. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? As, a, as everybody Googles, it, he's hilarious. Uh, it's always sunny. You've never watched it. Oh, oh it's, that, it's that guy. That, yeah. That's Charlie Day. Charlie, he's the, oh yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie, John, of course, yeah. Charlie duties. Um, real quick, so it's burning, one QB start eight. Yeah, burning pillows. If you're in there, I don't see your second half of that question. If you're still in here, um, 
burning dirt there it is second part was deleted so that wasn't me anywho um 110 start 8b qe barrel so he's getting back to 105 109 and a 25 first for his 102 and i'm assuming that person wants a very specific player in a start eight you're kind of going backwards you already paid up for the 102 and you're essentially going back the other way now to make this trade. Like you literally gave up a 24 first and a 25 first to move up to the 102. And now you're essentially getting back to, you know, a 109, 105 and a 25 first to move back. So I think he's kind of thinking this second trade is profit on the first trade that he made. Like it's a free first start eight though. You get, the, you get yep. these pieces. Now you're probably going, how can I consolidate? And this is probably the opportunity. So you're, you're kind of just spinning your wheels. I may keep that 102. Yeah. Now, this is one of those deals where if you make it, you just do it because you like making trades. Like, this is one. And you like making draft picks and you like to have a yeah. lot of them to play with. It's just like, hey, I did good, but now I want to make more trades. So I'm just going to keep trading. And then at the end of the week, you look back and you're like, wait, what, what the hell did I do here? Like, uh, no, no. Hold on to that 102. Make the pick. Okay, so let's go to this one here from Garrett. When your league is going tight end premium in two years, when do you decide to make moves to grab tight ends? Grab now, and they don't hold the value for two years, but grab later, and the price will be up. Thoughts? What's a premium? Let's say it's a 1.75. Ooh. If it is 1.75, then you're going to adjust the values of not only the top end ones, but more so some of the ones that are in the gross range. The Njoku's, the Evan Ingram's, like those guys all of a sudden become, I'm fine having a couple of them because I can flex them, but I'm guessing if it's just 1.5, doesn't change much. Give me the, give me the studs and the studs and duds. So I don't think I wouldn't really change the value of them. If I have one of the studs, I'm not, you know, I, maybe I trade them because everybody else thinks they're worth more, but yeah, I wouldn't really adjust much if it's just 1.5. I'm going to say, no, it's not quarterback. I, I know I do get that it's two tight ends, but I'm probably not going to, I'm probably going to guess wrong anyway. And the tight ends are going to be expensive. The good ones are expensive anyway. Like any of the top 10 are going to be fairly expensive. Can I get Evan Ingram cheaper now than I could then? Sure. Do I know if Evan Ingram is going to be any good in two years? Maybe. It, so, it's sure. just two, it's just tight end premium, right? Not two tight ends. Yeah, just tight end premium. Oh, it's literally in, just in one. Two years is when it's switching to tight end premium. Mm, yeah, look, if I can get a discount on Kyle Pitts now, sure, but I, I don't imagine that you're going to be able to get a discount on Kyle Pitts anyway. Okay, so A Town 21. Usually miss these live because I'm stationed in Hawaii and they happen while I'm at work, but I'm stateside for the week, so no way I was missing out today. Good to have you, man. That's awesome. Good looking fan. Appreciate too. you, dude. Yes, Thank sir. you very much. Appreciate that. All right. Those are nice notes to see. Okay. Let's see here. Pillsbury Dope Boy. Appreciate last week's advice. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. Sent the 101, 201, and Pittman for Lamar, and then sent Lamar and Jimmy G for Kyler and London on a roster that's not competing in 24. Which wide receivers are worth the 24 first with to tear down off London? Judy, DJ Moore enough, or DJ Moore enough? 10 team, 2 QB, start 11, half PPR. So he's saying tearing down from London, would you trade Drake London for Jerry Judy in a 24 first? No, because think about it. He acquired Lamar to then pivot down to Kyler and Drake London, and now he's pivoting off of Drake London for two more pieces. So he's going to be left with Kyler, Jerry, Judy, and DJ Moore for the original 101, 201, and Michael Pittman? No. So so he's saying here, uh, which wide receivers are worth a 24 first with to tear down off of London? Okay, so, so can he's getting sell the London first in one of those Judy guys. and the 24 first? I like that better than getting both, but I still think he's getting too cute. He tiered off of Lamar for Kyler and Drake London. So it's it's really you're you're trying to what add another first next year to try to move then back up and go buy a, a better running back or you know what I mean? It just feels like he's going going one step too far here. I don't hate it. I don't hate getting one of these guys on a 24 first, but what's the plan with it? If he has a plan with it of what he wants to do with these assets, like go back in and buy another elite quarterback or something, then sure. I'm okay with it. 
Okay, so let's take a quick breather from uh, from this while I read off the winners of those three listener league spots from the March Madness bracket. We had I'm going to jack up his name, and I apologize, but uh, but two brothers. We had Bjornar and uh, and B R A G E. Shane, how would you pronounce that name? It was uh, Bjornar Barrage? and Hogner. Okay, what's the name of Thor's hammer? <laughs> this Ragnar now. Uh, so so he uh he took us up on the offer to to help us out and do the calculations on the uh, on the brackets where i messed up the settings didn't change them and it wasn't the c difference bonus anywho so the winners of those three spots are drum roll please of course it closes matt's majestic bracket i think that's matt gilbert i want to say he uh sent me a twitter dm uh josh weekland and Evan Ringler. And it's actually good that we gave out three because there was a huge tier break after those top three. Um, Matt had 120, Josh 139, Evan 139. And then the next was 120. So it was a ton of work, but they actually turned this around pretty quickly. So they said that they're data data junkies and uh, want to help us out in some form or fashion. And I mean, we they should take them up on that. They literally dm'd this show yesterday at like three o'clock and i didn't get around to respond to them to like six and they already got it back to you that is awesome and thank you guys very much yeah we and were trading the, emails and yeah the tournament has been over for eight days and clay was absolutely dreading have to do it himself so oh, they definitely helped clay brutal. out when you have a a somewhat successful youtube channel and you can uh, leverage the fact that you found somebody that was a an expert at doing this versus what were you gonna have yeah. to do manually pull them all and like spreadsheet it you got it man it would have taken me oh. freaking freaking weeks freaking weeks um yeah so thank you to uh to you guys and um congrats to the three <laughs> i don't even want to try to say their name you guys <laughs> um and congrats to those other three listener league winners so we'll be giving out more spots i think we have another six to eight to give out depending on if we go 12 or 14 team okay we still have 436 eyeballs in here just take a peek down make sure you hit that like if you haven't already we'd appreciate that and let's keep ram in here thought we agreed to a 24 team two copy league can we do that on sleeper though? I'm not doing. I'm not doing a, dead in his tracks. A, not doing an MFL. Uh, hold on, I do. I do. Uh, Commish uh, five leagues on sleeper. So let me just check. I have no. You idea. mean you have commish powers on five leagues? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You got that little that little <laughs> orange circle with the yeah. C. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you can't do it on sleeper, no way. Not not doing MFL. Fucking Blackberry. Okay, let's go to uh, Jerome. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Tuesdays are back. What is the outlook on Amon Ra? Is he a legit wide receiver one? Leverage trade candidate? Would you take Tyreek in two seconds for him? Have Chase, DK, and Ridley as my other wide receivers. Thanks, guys. Oh, my God. Yes, I would take Tyreek in two seconds for him. I know Tyreek's retiring in um, three years. But yes, I, I would make that deal. And I do think uh, Amara is, Amar is legit. I tried to, as much as I could, belittle his accomplishments, um, his rookie season, because um, I, I made the excuse of, well, there was no one else to throw to, even though I'm old enough to know better that you earn targets. And guess what he did in year two? He went out and earned even more targets because he is what we call a target hog. So he's yep. definitely legit. Um, he's a leverage candidate because if someone likes him better and I can get Waddle in a pick for him, great. Um, you know, T Higgins in a pick for him, great. But specific to this trade, yeah, I'm taking Tyreek in the two seconds all day for him. Yeah, he's good. I wouldn't say he's great. There's a little bit of a uh, concern with... You know, he was outside of the top 24 in targets per route run this year or outside of the top 40 in team air yard share. And he is, I don't want to say he, I think his ceiling, absolute ceiling would be kind of like what 90% of what Cooper Cup's given you. But if you said you wanted to pivot off of that for Tyreek Hill, who in a given year, I think is better and you get the two seconds, I'm okay with that. He's good, but I don't think... I would bet against him being one of the guys that just sticks in the top eight or so. He probably settles more in like the the nine through fifteen range, which is good, just not worth. Yeah, you're not paying two first for Amon Ra. 
So would you trade Amon Ra um, for Brandon Ayuk in a 24 first? Is he another one of those uh, guys yes. who do that for you? Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you for that super chat. Let's keep on rolling here. Uh, do, do, do. Let's go to Exodus. One of two, 12 team super flex PPR, start 10, two points for tight ends. QBs are Hertz and Watson. Our running backs are Jacobs, Pierce, Mixon, and Najee Harris. Wide receivers, Hollywood, Judy, Kirk, DPJ, and Palmer. Tight ends are Njoku and Higby. Being offered Purdy or Howell, plus the 101, 103, and 108 for Jalen Hurts. What are your thoughts? The other team has Lamar, Purdy, Howell, AJB, Lamb, JJ, London, JMO. Here's the move. If he wants your Jalen Hurts, I'm getting his Lamar Jackson. And what is he willing to add? And if right. he's willing to balk at that, then sorry, we're not a trade fit. If he's adding a first to, to Lamar to get Jalen Hurts, I'm at least considering it. But I'm guessing this guy wants to pair Lamar and Jalen Hurts, and I'm, I'm not handing that to somebody for three no. picks. Uh, I love Jalen Hurts. I would think about this deal. Um, what's the rest of his roster? So, so no, you you don't know what, what we're ta- where we're at then because he's trading away Hurts. I know. For, I said I love Jalen Hurts, but he's getting Bijan, <laughs> CJ Stroud. Sorry, I jumped all over you because I thought you were just trying to buy. No, 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 no. I'm just, like no, 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 no. I, I, I know. And go back to his wide receivers. I'm just looking at the rest of his roster. It's only start ten. His wide receivers are very bleh. Um, his running backs are kind of. Bleh. Um, I would think about it. I'll say that I, I might be able to be convinced if there was another second involved, maybe. But I probably won't want to do it. But I. I would think about it hard. The other team also has London. Can I get London in this deal somehow? 101, so, 103 in London. I mean, would, I'm not handing trade. the guy Jalen yeah. Hurts, and he has the AJ Brown stack, and he has Lamar Jackson. I'm no. not handing another team that. No. I'm keeping my two elite quarterbacks. He can go find that deal somewhere else. Now, if he wants to have a conversation with, you know, the the CD Lamb or AJ Brown in the trade, and he's willing to move Lamar Jackson, then that's different. But it sounds like he's probably wanting to pair Lamar and Hurts. I'm just not handing that to him for draft picks. Nope, nope. It would have to be five plus first if he wants to. Uh, if he wants to get out. Just and if you're in a it. league, if you're in a league with Shane and you have a pick that says like 102, 103, 101, go to him. He may trade. With so you. here, here find, find your Shane. So here's what I'm saying, right? So if I'm on, if I have a roster, and this is pretty pretty one of my oldest strategies if i have a roster that i feel is middling even and i don't see a path to getting better i'm going to explore every avenue to if i have to go a little off kilter a little off skew askew askew not off skew if i have to go a little askew and risk a little bit i'm willing to do it in some cases but you're handing that guy jalen hurt with lamar and it that you, but you know what? A roster with Jalen Hurts and Deshaun Watson is not middling. I'm not. Uh, uh, it doesn't have the roster. sexiest skill players, but it doesn't matter. You All right, so maybe adv- fine, fine. Maybe not specific to this roster in general. Then. Okay, and that's a more okay. general statement. Okay, fair. London for JT acceptable in a rebuild. Is Lamb a prime tier down candidate? What return is okay for Tua and Superflex? Love the show. So in a rebuild. Would you trade Jonathan Taylor for Drake London? Might be the best. You can. If you're that set on trading Jonathan Taylor, I don't love it, but sure. Yeah, maybe get it. Maybe get a little piece back, even if it's just like some yeah. some body running back. Get get another mm-hmm. thrown in two for one if you're rebuilding. Um, yeah. Is Lamb a prime tear down candidate? Yes. Yep. Not because he's not good, but he's wide receiver three or four when the reality is the difference between him and wide receiver eight to 10 is not that much. Depends on what the tear down is. Is it Amon Ross St. Brown in a third? Then no. Can I tear down to the bottom of this tier? Can I get Devontae Smith in a first? T. Higgins in a first? Like you do that deal, you take it. But see, they got to define tear down. A lot of people go, oh, tear down. Let me go to that Jerry Judy in two seconds. That's not a tear down. 
Right. What return is okay for Tua in Superflex? Would you sell Tua for the 107? Tua or Will Levis, Shane? Whatever decision I make is going to be the wrong one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tua, because if he plays... He's he's a top 12 quarterback, even if he's not exciting, even if he's closer to Kirk Cousins than he is the elite tier of that top 12. And we'll let Levis. You got it. Well, Levis. It. Um, a lot of question marks around him still. I'm listening to maybe too many NFL uh, 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 podcasts, but I'm, every time they talk about the guy, I get a little more worried and think of Kyler Bowler. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. the difference oh, is with Le with Levis, nobody really likes him either. So man. you're not pivoting. If you were pivoting to Tua for a quarterback people liked, I could understand it. But I don't think either one is going to have like this great resale value. So I'm okay just taking the guy that can produce. So I I'll say this though: Tua has he does have more supporters in the general market than Will uh, Levis does right now. Levis, uh, yep. Because like, you know every time I, I, I say anything bad about Tua, like I'm usually going to get blown up somewhere. Or if it were in one of our patron chats and we yep. mentioned Tua, at least one person's going to come for us. Um, it's like they have a, a that on just and and JMO JMO people. I don't want to talk about JMO. I don't, I don't have it in me tonight. Not tonight. Dude, people people couldn't even make it past the first two minutes of that live stream without pressing pause and hammering the comments. Oh, which hey hey we enjoy we love the engagement, but it was it's like yeah they can't even make it. They probably <laughs> dropped the comment then bounced. No, look I'm hey, not a guy that does one of those takes, shows, but. Yeah. If I did, uh, I, I know uh, that it definitely draws in uh, uh, some uh, some viewers and clicks, man, because whew, I got <laughs> flamed. Yeah, you got smoked. Burn and dirt. I saw that you found the second part. Thank you. Uh, you find gentlemen are my go-to resource help. 12 teams start 10 super flex, an extra half point for tight ends. Uh, it's one running back. Purdy and Ritter at QB. Running backs are James Cook and Algier. Wide receivers, Alave, Burks, Tony, Myers, Dubs, Ridley, Ingram at tight end. He's got the 101, 104, 107, 108, 109, and then the 201, 202, and 203. Nice picks there. I have no idea what to do with all those picks. I feel like I could build a dominator. Not sure of the right way to get max value. Can you so go back go to, to this first picks, part? Please? Yep. Um, here. Let's... 101, it's 104, old. 107, 8, 9. I would like to make the 101 and 104. The 107, 108, 109, and 201, I would offer for a top uh, six wide receiver and see what happens. I'm like, dude, I'm giving you or do that. I'm giving you three firsts and a second. And let's just let's just see. Let's just see. I couldn't disagree with Shane more because literally this roster is terrible and you have Brock Purdy and Desmond Ritter and I'm not trading all those picks for a receiver. So, okay, again, though. But We're literally, buying a hammer, but we, we need several hammers. Who, okay, but who are we giving away? Fine. So, so fine. Can you flip all the 107s and 108s and 109s for 24 first then? I, listen, I think this is one of those teams that's not winning next year. So... You take the 101 and you see what you can get for it. If you have to pick Bijan, just be wary. This is one of those you put be wary of putting Bijan on this team. Can I trade back for anything that helps me from that 101 to 102 and take CJ Stroud or Bryce Young or whoever you want to take? Take another quarterback at 104. Shit, you probably double down and take Will Levis at 107. Now you're looking at 108, 109, 201, 202, and 203 going, how can I kick some of those picks to the future? I don't want to make them all. I maybe want to make one or two. But you're going to have to kind of pick your spots and push value to next year. And James Cook's on the table. Tyler Algier's on the table. Kadarius Tony's on the table. Jacoby Myers is on the table. Calvin Ridley's on the table. All these guys are on the table to move. Because you don't, I don't feel comfortable with what he has. Just going out. Oh, I'll wait till twenty twenty four or twenty twenty five. Half his roster could be dead by then. All right. Well, then he needs to put in the work. We're trading the one hundred four and the one hundred seven, or one hundred four. We're going to trade the one hundred four and the two hundred one. Get up to the one hundred three. We're going to move 
do, do, do Cooks and Algier, we're going to get at least a 24 first and a wide receiver back. With a 103, <laughs> we're getting a quarterback. <laughs> at 101. No, no problem. Is 101. Uh, yeah, we could trade that back. We'll take the 102 and whatever. And just drive two quarterbacks. There. Bernie Dirt needs to message Shane on Twitter and just say, Shane, list out every trade I need to do. Yeah, Fine. yeah, right. We'll Spreadsheet form. No, and, and you have so much leverage with all these picks. Like, no no rush to get it all figured out right now. People are going to be clamoring for your draft picks come draft day. Everybody's going to be so freaking jealous. And you've got that whole corner there, 201, 202, 203. You're going to be able to move two of those for a 24 first, I bet. But just Slow don't, play trade, don't trade four of them for one player. Nope. Like that's the one thing you've built here is flexibility. Don't go, oh man, let me go give up three of these for that Garrett Wilson. That just it's not the time. Yeah, go get your Mar Chase. <laughs> <laughs> so if we um if we miss a super chat tonight, by the way, uh just just let us know. Email dynasty trades in five at gmail.com. Uh YouTube and StreamYard are being super funky. Like I've got a couple stray super chats here. Like here's one from Jay Schrader. Um, thank you very much for this, but we don't even see a, see a message attached to it. Um, there was another one here that was pretty comical. Da, 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 da. A trader to a month. Maybe this is just a $2 tip for a trader to a month question that you guys get in Twitter or something like that. But Colin, if you did have a, uh, oh, there we go. He gave us a $10 one too. Let's go straight to Colin. Okay. Thank you, sir. What trade should I be offering? 12 teams start... QB running back tight end. So that's three super flex Four, two wide receivers make six, two flexes, eight, start eight, 12 team, uh, super flex four keepers. <laughs> QBs are Jackson Watson and Murray running backs, Jacobs, Harris, Jamal Williams, wide receiver, St. Brown, T Higgins, DJ Moore, no tight ends keeping Watson. Um, was that Jacobs? uh jackson and then stp st brown stds stb oh, okay. oh man so it's a start eight he can only keep four so really listing the whole roster is irrelevant because he can only keep four of them would you keep josh jacobs over t higgins I guess in a start eight, he probably is thinking he needs to take a running back and just he can find another T. Higgins in the draft because there's going to be probably some good receivers that are cut. I, I'm okay with that, but I don't. You only have to start one running back. Yeah, and then that makes me kind of think I don't want to take Josh Jacobs. I'd rather have T. Higgins. But, I mean, I think yeah. the biggest advantage he has is he has Watson and Lamar Jackson. I, in this format, it feels like if you just had Watson and Lamar, you could just fill in the other spots with, you know, I'm I, I'll flip a coin between Higgins and uh, Josh Jacobs, but I think I'm going to hold on to Higgins. I'm going to hold on to Higgins. I think he, we saw a little bit of a lull in his production last year. And this isn't really based on anything other than, you know, my thoughts. I And I don't see Josh Jacobs uh, reproducing what he did last year. Anything remotely near that. Yeah. And he's also depends on with these keeper leagues, where does he draft? Because there's probably a couple guys equivalent to Josh Jacobs or so that's in the, that's in the draft pool now. Plus yep. Bijan, plus the rookies. So I right. think he's probably able to rep replicate that. So I'm okay with keeping Higgins. Okay, let's keep going. Here was another uh, super chat from Steven. Um, again, we don't have a message attached to this one. Maybe Shane it. can find it. Did you try to find it? There's another one in there. You got it? Okay, cool. Let me uh, let me see if I can pull that up then. Nope, nope, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's a lie. Okay, so if um if we don't get to yours, please just email Dynasty Trades and Five. Miss Super Chat as subject line. Okay, let's uh keep rolling here. Rockstar, ten team super flex start ten, most in return for Hollywood Brown. Would you ten take team start a ten? Couple, probably would a, you take a couple seconds. I think you'd be lucky to get a couple seconds. He's probably not worth a first, and this is a 10 team. So, you know, a mid second is equivalent to like an early second, which I think is his price. So, I would be, if you get two seconds, I'd be good with that. He, he's one of those players, he's always going to be worth more to just hold on to than you're ever going to get on the market because there's just a narrative that he's always injured, which is 
probably not helped by me calling him saying that he has brittle foot syndrome um, because he keeps injuring his same foot. But when the guy plays, he's a very good wide receiver. He puts up wide receiver one week, not consistently, but he can. I just think you're better off just holding him than than whatever return you're going to get if the return is a couple of random seconds. Who would you rather have, a Hollywood or Pickens? Hollywood. Pickens. Pickens. Ooh. Yeah, Scott wants to I like, Pickens. I don't even like Pickens, but other people we like Pickens. Yeah. 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 I found yeah. Stephen Wadsworth. Oh, you did? Nice. Okay, so let me put that up. Thank you for that super chat, Stephen. What do I do with my picks? 101, 105, 107, 109, 111, 205. And then he has the 210 through 301. I have Goff, Lance, Mac. There's a risky comma there. Is there a part? I got three? another one. I got another one. <laughs> yeah, right after that. Just did right, it. Cool. Also, I saw your mock the other day, Scott. You took Roshan as the fourth back off the board. Um, is it all about draft capital? So that was like just based on the mock that we saw that we were doing it based off of. So he went early round four to the chiefs and it was just a market pick. I, I acknowledge that picking between running back three and 12, who knows you'll, you'll see when we release the, the next couple uh, that we just released the one eleven, and when we released the one twelve video, it's literally like pick your guy, but we're going to get to the rookie draft and it's the, the order can completely change. So I don't think that's an indictment on Roshan at all. No, I like, I like Roshan. Look, these running backs and, you know, I've talked a lot about like how Zach Charbonnet is like my running back three, although from everything everyone's talking about lately, he might be the second running back off the board. So he might even move up, but just as an example, right now, he's my running back three. If he falls to day three and there's four running backs in front of him, he's no longer my running back three. Um, it's just, yeah, draft capital is going to play a big part on this because that's going to be what separates these players. Because especially a player like Roshan Johnson, if, if the NFL invests a second round draft capital in him, even third round based off of the little that they saw of him in college, I'm going to feel really, really good about his prospects. And I, to be honest with you, I don't think any running backs outside of Gibbs and Bijan go in the second round. You might yeah. see one at the end of the second, but you're going to see a massive cluster of like 10 running backs go in a span of like 70 picks. And the dynasty community is going to go. They're all got similar draft capital, which ones landed in the spots that we want. And I don't right. think that's a bad process that the guys that land in the great offenses are the really good opportunity spots. It's hard for me to say, yeah, I'm going to take a guy I liked better over the dude that landed in Cincinnati or the mm -hmm. guy that landed in Miami, you know, like those places people are going to take the running back, whether they liked him or not. That's what I'm most excited about because this 23 class, everybody was getting all pumped about it. These these running backs, you know, the 2023 class running backs. Once, well, you know, it's going to be fun to see where they land. You know who killed this running back, this class? And I was thinking about it today as I was listening to another podcast. I think it was uh, Pat Fitzmaurice's with uh, Fat. I can't say anyone's name correctly. Pat Fitzmaurice with uh, Thor Nystrom. And they were talking about like Kenny McIntosh and uh, Zach Evans and uh, Sean Tucker wasn't mentioned, but it was like one of those like, geez, I can't believe they didn't mention him. That's like three running backs right there that we had expectations for that all just completely like just washed out. Although Sean Tucker produced, it's just everyone hates him. I, and not to go into this because we could go five more, ten more minutes on this. What killed this running back class is the flat market of the NFL. It's not the players. It Five years ago, you would have seen multiple running backs in this class that get pumped up into second round, late first round draft capital. Maybe not late first, but like much better than what they're going to get. It's just a product yeah. of the position. Look at look at the contracts the guys are getting. Yeah. There's guys out there that could fill a role that are not even getting a sniff of interest guys like Damian Harris are signing for near the league minimum. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, that's, it's just unfortunate. And I think that's why you're no, making a big bet in dynasty that listen, if I am a 14 year old running back, why the hell am I playing running back? If I can make it at linebacker or anything else, I should be doing that. My, my goal should not be to become the next Zach Evans. What is that? You know, like that's yeah. not what I want to do. I would do anything else. So I think we're going to see a, a major shift in like, man, I don't want my kid playing running back. What's the upside? Even if I make the NFL, which is like a 10th of a percent chance, what am I going to get? You know, like make $10 million over five years and get CTE from it. I mean, it's just not worth it.
Start a YouTube channel. Um, let, let's just address this real quick. We don't have any uh, format. It doesn't look like unless there was another part. But um, let's just let's just guess here. What do I do with my picks? 101, 105, 107, 9, 11. I assume super flex because he lists off golf, Lance and Mac. So taking let's just say we take Bijan then at 105, take take a QB. Then you got all sorts of flexibility with those next picks. Can I add to Trey Lance to go up to mm. a quarterback spot in this draft? Can I add yeah. to him? the problem is he has Mac Jones and Trey Lance, which yeah, are yeah, yeah. like two of the least desirable players right now. So, and he doesn't have the picks where it's like he's got the 101. Great. That's Bijan. And then he could get sniped on the next three quarterbacks. And now he's right. like, wow, I get everything in this draft. But would, would you let this ride, Shane? Would you just go, you know what? Let me gamble and take every skill player here. And I'm just going to miss out on all the quarterbacks. I'll take Will Levis and maybe oh, Richardson well. falls to me at 105. No, you already know what I do at 109. I'm going to add another quarterback to this room. It's going to be Jordan Love. You guys are all going to make fun of me and be like, oh, and in Hooker. Jordan Love. No, uh, I'll, I'll trade the 109 for Jordan Love. 101 will be Bijan. 105 will be wide receiver. Charbo at 107. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'll do. But no, not Hendon Hooker. If Hendon Hooker's still there at 210, I'll draft Hendon Hooker. Okay, let's see here. So, Mitch, let's go to your super chat. Thank you very much. You guys are the best. 10 team super flex start nine PPR. QBs are Fields, T Law, and Pickett. Running backs, Aaron Jones, Khalil Herbert, Damian Harris, Patterson. Wide receivers, Lamb, Keenan Allen, Deontay, Terry McLaurin, and Bateman. I have the 103 and the 106 and a late third. I have a friend that wants to get my 103. Excuse me. But I think he wants JSN, which is what I want, as he has okay quarterbacks. Would you trade it and get the 104 and 208 or take JSN and get best available at 106? Nope. Not enough. You need to be more creative. You need to give me more leverage than that 208 in a 10-team start nine. The 208 is like handing me like a penny. It, it's worth nothing. He's got a good roster. I'll be fine with Gibbs or JSN here, but I'm not trading back a spot because now I'm now searching for what to do with that pick. I'm already sitting in that range at the 106. Yeah, and especially when it's a player that um, you, or it's your friend. We have no friends in, in Dynasty football, just just enemies. Scott and Claire are my friends on this show, but in our leagues, they are my enemies. Anywho, um, especially when you know your enemy is going to be targeting a player that you actually want to. Yeah. Like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. No. So in this kind of format, 10 team, uh, super flex start nine, what second round does move the needle? You said the 208 is like a penny. Does the 201 do anything for you in this format? It, the only thing it does is it gives you the ability to pick a player in a 10 team that someone else in the future may like you, you're getting a good profile there, right? Like you're right. probably getting Jordan Addison or you're probably getting, uh, whoever the RB three is maybe could fall there. Like. It's a player you could flip for more in the future, but in terms of your lineup, 10 teams start nine. No, it's hard pressed to say any of those picks are going to matter outside the top three. Fez, thank you for the super chat. 10 team super flex PPR. I have QBs, T law, Kyler Murray and Stafford and Mac Jones, Najee Harris, ETN, Damian Harris, wide receivers are CD Waddle, London Pickens, Tony Pitts and Kittle at tight end. And he has the one one three ten. 10, 324 first. What should my next moves be? I'm okay putting Bijan on this team. It's not the greatest roster construction, but I think he has enough talent that he could contend. Like, I'm okay it's, putting Bijan here. It's got good looking tight end room, wide receiver room. Yeah, right, running back room is, is straight, but Bijan would help that help that out. Can he add a 24 first to Kyler Murray to go get like Lamar? Or go get Justin Fields or someone like that. Because I think if you add Fields or Lamar to T Law plus Bijan, Najee, ETN, C D, Waddle, London, yeah. I mean Pitts, I think he can contend. I think he's probably one of the favorites if he can do that. It's just that Kyler part that's a little wary for this year, but I think he can add Bijan here. Uh Kyler's yeah. already practicing, are well, maybe not practicing, cleared for practice, already talking about he's gonna miss less time than we expect, baby. So I expect him to be out there no later than week eight. <laughs> <laughs> but look, yeah. here's the thing. You got Stafford and you got Mac Jones to rotate at quarterback until Kyler Murray gets there. And I don't like particularly mm -hmm. Mac Jones, um, but he's a human being that you could put in the position when you have to. 
and Stafford, assuming his back isn't um, still injured, he's much better. Than I mean, those are game. those are rough QB two, Shane. Those are like are, it's not great. It's, it's it's not it's not good, Bob. I'm not going to lie to you, but we can rotate those guys. And what do we have? We have the three ten plus three twenty four first. Look, yeah. if you want, you can get fancy and try to trade T, uh, Kyler Murray in a 24 first for Justin Fields, but I wouldn't feel good about myself doing that. Yeah, you got a good team there. And yeah, it, you have the flexibility to be able to throw one of those 24 firsts with a quarterback to upgrade a quarterback and still have two firsts from 24. So good squad there. Um, okay, Garrett has a Devi League. Thank you for the super chat. He won it last year. 12 teams, super flex, start 10, half PPR. Lineup is Mahomes, Fields, Dylan Herbert, Stevenson, uh, Marquise Brown, DK Sutton, Ingram. Got Gibbs, Charbonnet, Addison, Quentin Johnston, and Tillman coming in with Raheem Sanders, Shipley, Troy Franklin, and Singleton, ETN in the pipeline. Okay, question. Are you pushing in this year and how hard? What moves would you try for? There's another ETN in 25. This is me being his done. Brother, yeah, his yeah. brother, yeah. Now here's what I would do. Uh try to trade Devi players for NFL talent because you have a lot of good Devi names in there. Uh mm -hmm. guys like Will Shipley, the odds that Will it, we had this really good discussion in the Destination Devi Discord about some of the future running backs. And you're sitting here going, Man, I got Donovan Edwards and Will Shipley and Raheem Sanders. And guess what you kind of hope they become like Sean Tucker, Zach Evans, you know, maybe a step higher, but like the NFL is, you're not going to see a Bijan every year. You're looking at like Will Shipley, Raheem Sanders, and you go, hopefully next year they are, uh, you know, Sean Tucker and Zach Charbonnet. So if people think that, and that's a realistic expectation, I'm totally fine trading these guys that other people will value for NFL talent and always doing that. Use your Debbie players as essentially draft picks. Yep. Maybe you don't get as much, you don't get as much for him, but yeah, look, he's hitting on Gibbs, Charbonnet, Addison, Quentin Johnston. Like that's a yeah. hell of a haul coming in in a year. Yeah, I got enough talent. Let me keep pushing it forward and just backfill. And here's what it allows you to do. It allows you to take shots on the higher end talent that's further out. Because you don't, you don't right. need players next year. You can go, hey, who's the best player in 2026? I'll take him when other people are trying to hit on the RB5 from next year because they need players. You're going, that's okay. I'll wait two years for those elite players because then I trade him. Like Nick Singleton. I trade Nick Singleton now. Why not? People think he's the next Bijan. He's two years away. Go for it. Yep. Okay. Thank you for that super chat, Garrett. Let's uh, Let's keep going here. We're going to have to close this out soon. We have a few more super chats to ram through blind. Thank you for yours. 12 team, uh, 1.05 tight end premium start 10 quarterbacks are Hertz, Mac, Jimmy G Howell wide receivers, Garrett Wilson, Dotson, Devonte Smith, Burks, and Alec Pierce was named as a wide receiver running backs. Monty. That's it. Tight end Andrews and Gasecki. Uh, and Ferguson. Snuck in that Jake Ferguson. Shane wondered snuck who he the, was the other day on our roster review. Snuck in the Ferg. <laughs> the Ferg. Um, has a 101, 105, 210, 306, 405. What do I do with this startup team? It's a Bijan team, don't you think, Shane? Yeah, I've added Bijan to this. And then at 105, it, if he should happen the fall. Anthony Richardson. Yeah, I, I would smash Anthony Richardson in this. And if he doesn't oh, yeah. fall, well, that's fine. That means that probably Bryce Young or uh, the other guy fell. Uh, JSN is there. Or Stroud. JSN, yeah, you JSN get one of the four. Yeah, so you're, you're going to get a player that you like. And if, if Richardson's on the board, if he's available, I should say this is a definite, This is a team I'd like to add him to for that, that, that future upside. And then smash running backs with the rest of the picks. Yeah. Yeah. And you can probably have a chance to contend. I like it. Good stuff. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. All right. Pretty good job on the startup there. Um, let's go on to Darth Desmond. Thank you for the super flex. Just did a new super flex league. Did I just say thank you for the super flex? Or mm -hmm. super chat. Thank you for the super flex. Thank you for the super flex as well. Just did a new super flex league. Quarterbacks are Mahomes, Cousins, yeah, and Howell. Do I still need to address the QB room or should I focus on other areas? 
God, we got 497 people in here. We still have so close to 500. Oh, four and four for talking. Oh, well. Um, I'd say your quarterback room is fine for next year with Mahomes and Cousins. Probably fine for the next season with Mahomes and Cousins. I like Cousins a lot more than other people. Um, I'm not going to say I'm smarter than other people. You can uh, make whatever deduction from that you'd like to. Probably not. Um, I still would look to address it, yes. Um, Sam Hell is not unless you know the nfl was completely wrong because they took him in the fifth round he is not a future uh starting quarterback in this league yeah i agree i mean i think you're probably stuck for a reason i'm assuming you tried to get a better quarterback in the startup he couldn't i'm guessing he also might have some players that we would value higher than probably others might so like he's probably got a couple of non-quarterbacks that he drafted in spots where he could have moved around and got a quarterback so see if you can leverage that and if you can do it if you can get another top nine quarterback that's obviously the goal then you try to move cousins and sam howell you can peer down or you can go with sam howell as your qb3 the problem with cousins is he's hard to trade like once you have him he's harder to get off of than if you have him you know you can't trade him for a first easily so it's like you're kind of stuck trying to just piece together a qb3 around him instead of trade him Thank you for that super chat. Lounge Lizard, thank you. One of two. We do have the second. Good. Uh, 10 team super flex, half PPR, start nine. Burrow, Herbert, Lamar. That's nice. CMC. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So is this a pay to brag? It sure seems like it. Uh, Burrow, Herbert, Lamar, CMC, Brees Hall, Rashad Penny, Rashad White, uh, Brian Robinson, Lamb, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Smith, Elijah Moore, Burks. Hawkinson picks 107, then the 14th pick, 15, 16, 17. Um, what do I do with these picks? Package and upgrade for another hammer. Use all the seconds to fill out uh, more threshold running backs. Pivot picks to 24. Yeah. Oops. Can you just turn back to the, yeah, that's DHC. We got Barrow, Herbert, Lamar. Okay, we can't upgrade there. Um, start nine. CMC, Brees Hall. Then we've got Lamb, ARSB, Tyreek Hill, Devonta Smith. Uh, sure. Can you add the 107 to Devonta Smith? I, and I don't know what. Get AJ Brown? Like, doesn't that sound silly? Like it sounds yeah. silly when you say it out loud. I, try the 15 and 16 in Devonta Smith for AJ Brown. I, I, I'd be looking to kick. I'd like to get another 24 first out of all this stuff yeah. somehow. Yeah. Um, got plenty of assets for this year. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, I think what I'd like to do is try to get another piece that it can help me and a 24 first for that 107. Because now I'm kind of picking in a range where – you know, I don't even think the, the receiver I picked there is better than Traylon Burks or Elijah Moore necessarily. So like the 14, 15, 16, 7, 17, I'm actually okay backfilling with more running backs. Try to get me yeah. another Rashad White, another Brian Robinson. I don't need to take four, but I think that might be the one thing on your team where you go, okay, CMC goes down, Brees Hall doesn't come back. I need more running back bodies. But man, like yeah, we haven't even talked about pivoting off one of the quarterbacks for extra value. He's got that in his back pocket. Yeah. I don't even think you need to make that at this point. Like don't hand your competition, yep. a guy that could help could hurt you when you have all these assets already. So I would say most of the picks trying to pivot to 2024 value. This is the team where you want to go into next year coming off the championship and you have three of the top 10 picks. And that's right. how you're just building a monster team that you just continue to leverage it forward. Great job. Definitely paid to brag on that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great team. Okay, let's uh let's go to sweet knees here. Have I already done this one? Da, da, da. Yes. yes, this was very early on, and it was a great it trade. Was. You got some cheap yep. Amon Ra St. Brown there. Uh football fanatic, 12 team super flex, have the 102 and 106 offered Lamar and the 212 for those picks. My roster is Mahomes, Dobbins, Akers, DK, DJ Moore, London, Bateman, Ridley, Burks, Goddard. Done. I'll pay that for Lamar, especially with those receivers. You're ready to go. Jane's hesitant. He loves that 102 and that 106. Uh, no, no, I'll take I'll take Lamar here. He's gonna play football, right? I uh, apparently he was face chatting, FaceTiming, whatever you call that on iPhones, whatever. Face chatting. 
face, face chatting. chatting. Yeah. yeah, face chatting. <laughs> 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 face chatting with uh, with Odell Beckham Jr. after the trade. So, you know, for, I mean, this is a guy. Course. Isn't that the know, cool thing to do? Yeah, he's holding out for money, and the league is telling him he's not worth guaranteed money going forward. So, I don't see him sitting when he's going to be able to play for forty some million guaranteed this year. He's not. The, the only concern with Lamar is if he gets stuck on that franchise tag, even if they renegotiate it, and he makes forty two million. If I'm Lamar, I'm playing the minimum and then I'm getting out. So I, he could be risky going into the fantasy playoffs. That is a legit concern. This one here is great. Um, that Shane starred Fez two one three start nine. That's all we got. That's all we got. Surely we missed <laughs> something, Fez, or we just didn't include this. No, I thought Fez had another yeah. super chat. Yeah, he did. That was part of his super chat. The, the Where is it? We already answered it. We I think we already answered it. it. Okay. All right. Because I saw the top again, up I'm gonna go find it. No, we're good. Um, okay, Fantasy God, love you boys. Do I get a roster review at Discord? Don't mind to pay. Uh, goats, cheers. So roster reviews. I've got about eh, plus or minus 78 emails in our inbox inquiring about roster reviews. And we have a ton that we're working through that are in the hopper right now. So we are taking a pause on new submissions. What I'm going to do is eventually get an email out back to you asking if you want to be on a wait list and we're going to open them up after the NFL draft. So for now we're on a, we're on a slight pause, but we'll um, yeah, we'll crack them out and get them back and running again. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for the super chat though. Appreciate it, man. Fancy God. That's the one who's always talking about like your mom, his mom, right? <laughs> hey, discord. Stay tuned. Maybe something. I don't know. Yeah. Big T, thank you. Traded Josh Allen the 205 for T Law, the 105, Pollard and the 202. Superflex PPR 10 teams start 11. A Allen was the only asset felt I needed to tear down. How was this trade? With that context, it's fine. It's actually not terrible to. Th this is a great example of the situation I would trade off of Allen or Mahomes. Because I'm getting T Law and I'm getting two other starters on top of it. And I think if he said that was his best asset, listen, you do another trade like this, you turn Pollard and the 202 into three more pieces or something like that. All of a sudden, you you build yourself a team with a couple of tear downs. I like it. You like it, Shane? I'm fine with it. I like T Law. I can't say I don't like T Law and then get mad at you for getting a 105 and T Law. I will say that the dude that traded for, or lady that traded for Josh Allen, probably feels like, hey, I got Josh Allen pretty cheap, but. Oh, yep. no, the square deal. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Big T. Let's go to Kevin. Thank you for the super chat. Which tier of wide receiver or tight end? It's a 2.0 tight end premium. Could you go hunting for with Ramondre and the 107? Kyle Pitts? Yeah, I was about to say Pitts, but can you can you get Kyle Pitts for premium. Ramondre and the 107? 2.0. Not for me. It's going to be. And you know what? In a 2.0 tight end premium, that's where the edge is, is buying the tight ends at the ones where people don't really want them because you literally look at the scoring and you're like, wow, Evan Ingram outscored every receiver yeah. except for like the top 12. Yet he's not priced at a top 12 wide receiver price. So I think if you could get a guy like Pitts, that, you know, if he hits, you're going to be like, how the hell do I get him for these pieces? You know? So I think you got to aim high at the tight end receiver. I don't know. I mean, what, what could you get for Ramondre and one Oh seven chain that you'd actually consider buying? I think you can uh, get Garrett Wilson for that. Uh, I would try like a, an MF -er. I would obviously I, I'd go after my, my, my little tier from my second year wide receivers, uh, your, your guys, London, Alave. Alave, Wilson and Jame out. No, um, Wilson, <laughs> Alave, and Drake London, um, and see if I could get like a late second back if it was London. Yep, I like that. Yeah, yeah. First, start with the 107 for London, see what happens. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's probably some people that would just take that straight up. I don't, I can't imagine someone would do that for Alave or uh, the other gentleman. But maybe and, you know what's interesting too is in a two PPR, if Michael Mayer becomes Pat Fryermuth, he's outscoring most receivers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it, it, the, the pick actually has a little more value in this format because it is a good tight end draft. I just wonder sure. if they'll even last till 107 in this draft. Yeah, maybe not. Last one. Masternator seven. 
I'm the oh. clueless guy from last stream. Kittle for the 110 trade. <laughs> this is awesome. Here's another 10 team super flex. Get London, Gabe Davis, 24 second. Give Mike Williams, Terry McLaurin, and the 110. I don't care Not about Mike it. Williams. Look, Mike Williams and Gabe Davis are the same person. So it's McLaurin in the 23 110 for the 24 second in London. I'm okay fine with that. With, I'm yeah. fine with that. Yeah. Look at it that way. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Gabe Davis and Mike Williams are the same. Yeah. So actually, we like this trade, and not just because we yeah. were in this whole steal last week. <laughs> I love it. I'm I'm clueless guy from last stream. I, I know exactly which one he's talking about. Um, okay, that is it from us, guys. Thank you so much for what is this? What is this stuff? There's more in here. I don't think you can see. Are them. you serious? But there's there's four more? more super chats in there. Oh my god. Do you see those in there, Shane? Uh, I do see that one. Love the content. 12-team Superflex PPR. 1.5 tight end premium. Quarterbacks, Watson, Daniel Jones, Brady. I I love how people list Brady under their quarterback rooms. Chubb, Kamara, Monty. Wide receivers are A.J. Brown, Devonta, D.J. Moore, Hopkins. Tight ends are Njoku, McBride. He has an offer of Watson, A.J. Brown, and and, and Njoku, and his 24 first. For Barrow, Kittle, 206. Watson being Deshaun. If that was Christian Watson, yes, but you listed Watson under quarterback. So I'm going to say this is a hard, hard no. And you're giving up AJB. No, no, no. And a 24 first to boot. And the 24 first. Like, yeah, like Watson, AJB is an overpay right there for Barrow, Kittle, and 206. Go, go try to get Burrow without giving up Watson. See what the price is. You know, I'd be fine giving up a 24 first and A.J. Brown, but just price him out. At least the guy you know is willing to trade Burrow, but yet yeah, way too steep. This is not This is not where you tear up to go get a Tier 2 quarterback for a Tier 3 quarterback. No mm-hmm. thanks. Clay, back Brian to you. Smart. 10 team start 10 super flex burrow and a late 24 first for Dak, Brees, and Alave. Yes, would leave my QBs as Herbert, Dak, and Jimmy. I don't, I don't care. Yes, yeah, yeah, done. done. <laughs> now, I'll say this though Barrow is elite, I, and it's, it's hard to wrap my head around this. He was the fourth leading scorer in points per game last year, and I need to put a little more respect on his name, but you're getting Brees and Alave. So yeah, I, I got to make this deal. Yeah, yep. yeah, because you can all start. Right. You can start all of them, and you're getting okay. Dak back. It, you don't love it, but here, last one. It's a two parter, Clay. Alrighty, thanks for everything. Just bought you a coffee. Oh, thank you. I'm abroad, and super chats aren't working from here. Ten team super flex start eleven half PPR contender. QBs are Burrow, Dak, Love. Running backs: Brees, Hall, Walker, Pollard, Dobbins. Wide receivers are CD, Deontay, McLaurin, Judy, Tony, Elijah Moore. Give the 103, 205, and love. Get Deshaun Watson. Still have the 106, but no other 23 picks. Didn't we do this one at the beginning? I definitely Yeah, I think we said uh, we argued at this this one at the very beginning of the stream. So Yeah, yeah. I created the banner for this one. I I saw the uh, coffees. Thank you again. This was, um, yeah, this was Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> that's that's a good way to end it, right? Um, yeah, thank you, man. We appreciate everybody joining us tonight. 424 people still in here. It's awesome. We almost hit 500. We had like 496 so close, or something. And then like someone that. jinxed us, said something. Yeah, and I talked and then watching. 70 people bounced. Yeah. Um, no, thank you all very much. Be on the uh, Be on the lookout for the 112 show Thursday or Friday. Um, are you planning any sort of live stream for the NFL draft? Yes, we are. And we actually have to, we have to work out the details on that. So I need to need to figure out how, when we're going to do it. So yes, we will be, we'll, uh, we'll get back to you on that. I'll send out a community, uh, post on that as well. Hit the like, if you wouldn't mind before you bounce out of here and, um, and hit that notification bell on, on YouTube as well. If you don't have notifications turned on, cause we're going to be giving out more listener league spots, um, things like that. So keep an eye out for the community tab posts and uh one twelve show guys. It feels uh, good to be on a Wednesday again, or no, it's Tuesday. I don't even know the day anymore. Tuesday. Two weeks in a row. I'm all thrown off. No, I appreciate everyone coming out on our normal night. Always appreciate you. These are my favorite things to do every week. 
Yeah, and we're growing. We're going to hit 500 probably before the NFL draft or close to it. I mean, we had we had such good attendance and such good participation during the like deadest periods of Dynasty, like February, early March before the combine. So just awesome for everybody to be here. I still feel bad every week. We can't get to every question, but it's incredible how many we end up starring. And then we're just like in the middle of the show, we're working behind the scenes going like, there is no way we can answer 80 questions. Like, it's yeah, just- and, and, and great participation on that poll that I put in the community tab. Uh, when is yeah. your rookie draft? 788 votes. And that was just yeah. like yesterday. I just posted that. So if you haven't voted on that, go ahead and do a quick vote on that too. 50% of people right after the NFL draft. But anyway, all right, guys, enjoyed it. We will, uh, we'll see you next time. Appreciate everyone. Good night.